In this video, I'll show you scripts and plugins for 3ds Max that will speed up your workflow several times over. My name is Nikita. If you want more useful videos on the topic of architectural visualization, put a like and subscribe on this channel. Using the Copyter script, you can copy objects from one 3ds Max scene to another 3ds Max scene. Let's do this. I run our script in the first scene. We see a window like this with several slots. Let's copy our cube into the first slot. I click copy here and we see our object appear in our window. And in the second 3ds Max scene, I also call the Copytor script and click on the window with the cube. This object has appeared in the second scene. We can do the same thing with the other two objects by selecting them and copying them to another window. The next cool plugin is the Move to Surface plugin. This plugin allows you to put some objects on a plane. Let's select this sphere, for example. I run this script and select the plane on which I want to put this sphere. And literally in two clicks, our sphere is moved to our plane. We can do the same from a group of objects. I select them, click on the script, and click on the plane. It's very convenient. The next extremely convenient script is the instancer. For example, in our scene we have several independent light sources that are not instanced objects. We have the task of making them instances. I call the script, select the object to which all other objects should be oriented. Then I select the objects that I want to make instances and click make instances. And now they are instance objects. You can do this not only with light sources, but also with geometry. We have several boxes and we want to make them all look like the first box. I select the first box, then select all other boxes and click make instances. These boxes became instances. The next handy script is paste ref image. With its help, literally in one click, we can insert a reference image into our 3ds Max. Let me show in practice how it works. For example, we need to copy and paste a drawing of an apartment from Google Images into 3ds Max. I directly in the browser right-click, copy image, and inside the 3ds Max viewport right-click, paste ref image, and our image is pasted. We just need to adjust its size. The same can be done with pictures from the Windows folder. For example, I select the picture I am interested in, press Ctrl C, and in the viewport right-click, paste image. Great, you can also edit the settings of this plugin. Right button, Reef Image Options. Here you can make various settings for more convenient work with it. The following script is used to join several objects into one single mesh. Literally, in one click, we have several independent meshes. I call the script, it's called Quick Attach. Here I select the type of geometry I need to attach. In our case, it's Editable Poly. I select some or all of the objects, and I click Attach. Ok, now it's one object. You can do the same thing with splines. The next plugin that has saved many hours of work for 3D artists around the world is Relink Bitmaps. This plugin allows you to restore lost texture paths. For example, we have a model whose texture paths have been lost in this project. We open our script. In the right column, we see the whole list of textures, the path to which should be restored. Next, we need to set the necessary directory where the script will search and restore the paths to our textures. Click Add and select this directory. Click Relink. OK, the paths are restored and the textures appear on the screen. To do all this manually would take much more time. The next plugin is Collect Asset. This plugin allows us to package our scene in the folder we need, or create an archive. It also has a built-in texture search tool, let's check it out. I have also entered here the directory where we need to search for textures. Hit refresh, hit search. Textures are found, but they are not showing up in the viewport yet. Next, I will select the folder in which to save our project with all the textures. I also check the Copy Max file checkbox and check the Reassign to Selected Directory checkbox. Click Collect. And our project with our textures appears in the folder we need. We can also save the archive of our project by clicking on this checkbox. 
The next useful script is prune scene. This script allows you to clean your scene from garbage, from various unwanted elements for you, and also check your 3DS Max scene for viruses, which is extremely useful. Here you can select the checkboxes next to the elements you would like to clean. For example, you want to clean the scene from garbage, optimize memory, remove tweaked plugins from your scene, remove lost textures, and so on. In this tab, you can also make virus protection settings. The last free plugin is Floor Generator. This plugin has a free tariff and it will be quite enough for routine work. Let me create a plane. I'll apply the Floor Generator modifier. This plugin allows you to create parquet and laminate flooring from planes in seconds. Let me modify the width of our hardwood flooring. Increase the plane to about the size of a standard room. Let's make it 5000 mm. Here is the length of our hardwood flooring. Let's make it 1 meter 800. Below we can adjust the thickness of the parquet board, the size of the bevel, the distance between the parquet boards. Here we can change the offset configuration. With the spread parameter, we can randomize the length and width of our planks. To do this, let's deactivate the L buttons. Here we will set the range from 1000 to 2000. Let the width be from 100 to 300. Let the length be from 2000 to 1000 and the width from 300 to 100. And with the spread parameters, we can also change the degree of this randomization. In the very top expand list, you can choose the configuration of your parquet. In the free version, the number of these configurations is limited. In the general tab, we can change the offset of our floorboards relative to the baseboard. We can change the rotation and scale. You can also rotate the floorboards directly from the model. To do this, I select our mesh, press one button, and rotate our pattern with snap enabled. How to work with texturing in Floor Generator? Let's move on to the material editor. If you're working in V-Ray, you'll need the following map. Maps, V-Ray, V-Ray, multi-sub texture. If you're working in Corona, find the maps. Corona, Corona multi-map. There is a batch load button in each of the nodes. It's a batch load of textures. You will need such textures of laminate strips. There are a lot of collections of such textures on the internet. Let's work with Corona. I choose batch load textures. I select the necessary directory. I select all textures. You can see how all of our maps are loaded at once. And let's create a new Corona material. You can see that the Corona preview is not shown. That's because we didn't specify the Material Editor Renderer in the Render Settings. Let's go to Common, Assign, Renderer, Material Editor, select Corona. And connect all our textures in base color. Assign our material to the element. Let's turn on Texture Mapping. OK, in the Corona Multimap settings, there are various options for customizing and randomizing these maps. Now we will talk about really strong tools that are paid, but they are really worth it. So, the first plugin is Backdrop Generator. This plugin allows you to generate an environment in a few clicks. This will be handy for interiors and exteriors. The plugin automatically detects in which units our scene is located. And let's select the section we need. Let it be Backdrop Presets. And we select the necessary background that we like. Select and click Create. And click on the empty space in the viewport. We can see that we have a backdrop for our exterior. We can zoom in on it. And it's happening right in real time. We can change the U-axis styling. We can change the height and the radius. We can also select Backdrop Window. This is where the backdrop for the interior will be generated. Here you can also in real time change the tiling of your background, offset, size of your plane, and so on. Also in this section, you can also upload your textures for your backdrops. The next plugin is Dappled Light Generator. This plugin allows you to create planes with masks of leaves, branches, and various trees for drop shadows. Also, in a few clicks, select Dappled Light Plane and select the pattern we need for drop shadows.
click on an empty space in the viewport. Change the position of this pattern relative to our room. Let's enable interactive rendering in the Corona. It's a pretty simple plugin, but it's extremely effective and helps you save minutes of time as well. And the next cool plugin is Road Markings Generator. This plugin makes it very easy to create road markings and place road infrastructure for your scene. Let's call this plugin. We select the units of our scene. And here we see icons, inside of which there are presets for different tasks. For example, let's click on the markup icon. And here we can select, for example, a road crossing. In order to place it in the scene, we need a spline. Let's draw a spline on which our road crossing will follow. We select the crosswalk, and we see it appears on our scene in a matter of seconds. We can also change the parameters of our road crossing here. This is its width, this is the number of lines. In the same way, we can create road markings. For example, let's say it's a lane. I drew a spline in the center of the road. I select the line. And the lane appears in our scene. Also here we have various presets for road markings. Click on any of the icons and click on the road. And our icon appears. We also have presets for manholes. Well, and also in the last tab, there are 3D models of various road objects. For example, we can put out cones like this. Various speed bumps. Obstructing objects. And, most importantly, road signs. Which are quite high quality models. There are also traffic lights. In this tab, we can create our own blanks of textures and models. This plugin is a cool solution that allows you to significantly save time for creating road infrastructure. Another powerful and useful plugin is Smart Camera View. Let me open this plugin and tell you more about it. So, we have an interior scene. And in this scene, there are many different cameras. This plugin allows us to collect all of these cameras into one table and customize each of these cameras within this plugin. We can also customize all the cameras at once. For example, we can set their aspect ratio, their resolution, and we can also activate batch rendering of all our cameras with parameters for each of them that we set. For example, let's switch through the cameras by right-clicking on them. Here you can see the different types of camera selections. For example, select all, select by name, select according to resolution, select the one that is active right now, select one above and below, invert the selection and lock the selection. By hovering over each icon, you can read the name of that icon and a brief instruction. You should have no difficulty with this. We can rename any of the cameras, we can set the resolution for any of the cameras, we can set the resolution for several cameras at once, we can change the aspect ratio of the cameras, we can also change the DOF for each of the cameras here. Clipping, turning it on and off, we can change the lens width, we can turn automatic vertical alignment on and off. Align the camera on any axis and also lock the camera movement in the viewport. There are also a few different buttons a little higher up. By hovering over each one, you can see the functionality of each of these buttons. For example, this one is responsible for inverting. Aspect Ratio. This button allows you to assign a preset to each of the cameras. How to save a preset. To do this, you need to go into the settings of your render engine. Set all the necessary parameters that you are interested in for each camera. For example, here I can set a noise level limit. This is the threshold value of render noise, at which rendering will be stopped. I go higher and select save preset here. You can make as many presets as you want for each camera. And we can assign them to each camera using this button. And so, when we start batch rendering, each camera will be rendered with its own parameters which you can assign here.
Here we can assign the render format, the path where it will be saved. If you activate this button, the computer will automatically shut down after rendering all your pictures. But in order to start batch rendering, you need to click on this button with the selection of those cameras that you want to render. Now let's talk about how to install scripts and plugins for 3D Max. I'll show you this using the example of free scripts and plugins that you can download below this video. 3D Max plugins have the MZP format. Typically, these plugins are installed by simply dragging and dropping them into viewport. Let's install the Collect Asset plugin, drag and drop it. And the next thing we need to do is go to Customize, Customize User Interface, Toolbars, and in the Category tab, we need to find the vendor of this plugin. The name of the plugin vendor looks like this, and here is the Collect Asset plugin itself. Often, together with the plugin, there are text files with instructions on how to install it. So, we need to drag and drop this plugin onto our command line. Release. Our icon appears. In order to remove this icon, we right-click on it and delete it. Don't forget to click Save. OK. In order to install any script in 3ds Max, which has the extension 3 d Max macro script file, we need to first move it to the root folder of 3ds Max. Go to the scripts folder, we drag and drop the script here, and then we restart 3ds Max as administrator, that's important. And we go to scripting, run script, and select the script we're interested in. Let it be, for example, the script move to surface. Open it. And now we still need to find this script through Customize. Customize User Interface in the Toolbars tab. By searching, I found the provider of this script. I also move it to our panel. I save it. If I want to change the text on this button, I right-click on it, Edit button, and change the name. OK. After restarting 3D Max, the new name will be displayed. And to delete is still the same right-click delete button. In order to install the plugin floor generator, you need to copy the file with this plugin of the necessary version in the root folder of your 3D Max in the plugins folder. And then, after restarting your 3D Max, you will have a modifier floor generator. For all other free scripts and plugins, the same principle applies. I hope you found this video useful. See you soon.